It's time to revisit DDR5. All right, so the last time we actually did DDR5 content was when the 12900K Alder Lake released, right? Now at the time, DDR5, those kits weren't very good. Now, fast forward, I don't, how long, how, how many months has it been? Six months or whatever, I don't even know. Um, DDR5 actually progressed much more rapidly than I thought it would. Usually after a new memory generation comes out, it takes almost a year, up to two years, before the speed of the new generation even matches the old one, right? That was the theory back then. But we have these Hynix chips on these DDR5 modules. That overclock, these are basically the B-Die of the DDR4, if you wanna call it that. So fast forward till now, the numbers that you're gonna see today um, are very high, high numbers. The likelihood of you even getting a 12900K that can achieve these memory speeds is very rare. Now, I had two different 12900Ks. The first one had a very good DDR4 memory controller. The second one had a very good DDR5 memory controller. They're actually two separate things on Alder Lake. So you might actually have a 12900K that clocks very well, but it might have a very, very poor DDR4 memory controller. It might have a good DDR5 one. How do you know? The only way to do it is to actually test it and find out. But that being said, I cherry picked a DDR4 12900K for this one, and I also cherry picked a DDR5 one. So with that being said, we are upping the frequency on both sides. So with the DDR4 side, we are doing DDR4 4133 C15. On the DDR5 side, we are doing DDR5 7000. C32. Now it took me almost two weeks to dial in that DDR5 7000 and get it 100% stable. It was very difficult and very tricky, but it is possible. So the goal of today's video, eventually 7000, maybe even 8000 megahertz kits will come out. Now, what are, what are the performance gains that we're looking at going into the future here? Now, here's the other thing with this DDR5 kit. You'll notice that the heat spreaders are still in here, shaking around, right? I had to do the Lumi trick where I put these in paint thinner and it melted off the glue. I could not get those sticks to DDR5 7000 without water cooling them. I'll put a picture up here showing you basically my old EK Monarch water block I had to put on these sticks to keep them cool enough to get them to 7,000. So the other problem with this kit of memory is you can't just put a fan on them because man, I, I kind of wish I recorded it now, but when you actually take the heat sinks off, there is a voltage regulator in the middle of the sticks. And this doesn't have a memory pad or um, this doesn't have a thermal pad on it. So that kind of VRM on the memory isn't getting isn't being actively cooled by any airflow that you shoot on these sticks. So it's very difficult to cool. It's also it's also a Trident Z problem specifically. I I believe there are team group sticks out there without this problem. But for these sticks specifically, I had to water cool them. So so that's a minus one for these sticks. You go buy a kit of B-Dye DDR4, you don't gotta do shit. So with that being said, you have to have a binned motherboard. You have to have a binned CPU. You have to water cool the memory to get it that high. And you have to spend an ungodly amount of time tuning it. Are you willing to do these four things to get that 7,000 megahertz? Is it even worth it? Let's go to the benchmarks and find out. Now, first thing I did here was I ran that um, 3D Mark CPU benchmark. So both of these CPUs are at 5.2 gigahertz on the P cores, 
e cores are disabled and the ring clock is at 4800 megahertz so the results here in a synthetic cpu benchmark such as 3d mark zero difference within margin of error on both of these memory standards this whatever this benchmark is it does not scale with memory latency or bandwidth now, the first game that we're going to do is Rift Breaker. Um, I did bar graphs this time instead of side-by-sides because I wanted to actually record the lows. I wanted to do 720p, and I wanted to record the averages. So I wanted to try and collect as much data as possible here, but that would be impossible to do with side-by-sides, or I should just say it would take forever, right? So anyway, in Rift Breaker... I just used the standard CPU benchmark that's built into the game. You just launch it from Steam and you click CPU and you don't get a choice of options or anything. I believe this is 1080p on both sides, but this ended up being the exact same result on both platforms. Absolutely the exact same. Um, zero FPS difference. I actually did this one live on stream as well, and it was 100% identical on both of these. So... Whatever it is on this game, there is a threshold of these memory sticks that where it does not scale any further. CSGO is up next. And again, I use that built-in benchmark that I do for all of my videos. You guys know what it is. That workshop benchmark. And again, completely identical results. The, the DDR5 in 720p there. Uh, and the DDR4 and 720p, that's just run-to-run -run variance, margin of error. Again, once again, zero difference between these two platforms. Not looking too good for DDR5 at 7000 right now, but let us move on to the next one. Civilization 6 is up next, the usual AI turn-based uh, CPU benchmark that's built into the game there. This one actually wasn't margin of error. DDR4 is a bit faster, which makes sense since it has about 5 nanoseconds of quicker latency than DDR5 does. So again, still still a nothing burger. It's not it's not even a win. It's still a nothing burger on both. So three we're at three ties, four ties. We're at four ties. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is up next, and this is the only game that I could find in 720p also that actually scaled somewhat with DDR5. So this one actually has a 5% victory over DDR4 in 720p with a maxed out RTX 3090. So in order to see... The difference of DDR4 and DDR5, you need to be playing in 720p with a maxed out RTX 3090. Let that sink in for a second. But, but, the victory does go to DDR5. Last but not least, Warzone. Now, this is only 720p i didn't even bother with 1080p for this uh benchmark because the goal of this is to see that when the rtx 4000 series comes out like the you know the 4090 ti or whatever is there a point in investing in ddr5 for this game to future proof yourself for those 1080p or 1440p frames now, if you pay attention to the top left, you will see the GPU utilization percentage there. Now, neither of these platforms, I want to say, are maxing out that GPU usage. And the frames going onto these train tracks are identical on both platforms. So, as of the time of this recording, both DDR4 and DDR5 are exactly the same in Warzone when maxed out now here is the caveat to that adopting the ddr5 platform will set you back another maybe 700 or 800 dollars on top of the ddr4 equivalent platform now what can you buy with that 700 or 800 dollars well as silly as this is 
in order to get more frame rate in this game it's not so much about the memory anymore it's more about the clock speed so yeah I, as much as i hate to say it maybe actually taking the savings and getting that ddr4 platform you would be better off buying that 12 12 900 ks the uh the pre-bend high clocking model it's a complete waste of money and a huge ripoff and i will have a review for it coming up soon but clock speed here is more important than the memory platform so you got to do whatever you can do with those savings to clock your cpu higher well there you go so on average the ddr5 was about one to two percent faster which in my eyes is zero this memory kit costed me a thousand canadian dollars to get thank you to all the supporters that support the channel literally cannot so this kit was a thousand dollars the c690 unify x was six hundred dollars the motherboard and memory alone to do this testing for this video costed me sixteen hundred dollars all thanks to you guys and with that supporter money comes unbiased reviews like this one today now at the time of recording this video a z690 edge d4 is about 300 dollars a good kit of b-dye is about 250 so you're looking at about 550 dollars for the motherboard ram combo if you go the ddr4 route right this kit of memory at the time of recording this video is 500 us dollars this kit of memory alone is worth the same as a motherboard and ddr4 memory and you get one percent if you're lucky one percent if you're lucky if you even know how to tune it water cool it get lucky on your cpu and you get lucky on your motherboard maybe one percent ddr4 you know what you're getting so six months later we revisited it and ddr5 is still useless to this day and that is the real review the fact that these other tech tubers out there are using 3200 megahertz ddr4 is a complete joke ddr4 is just as fast or if not faster more reliably more often than ddr5 is still to this day and that is why the best ddr4 motherboard today is the z690 edge d4 now if you are doing a white build the strix d4 is a bit more difficult to get working but you can and it does work well so if you are doing a white build go for this one i will leave both affiliate links down below if you want to support the channel use those but these two motherboards are the only ones you need for the alder lake platform until the end of the 12900k yes that includes the 12900 ks so boys i'm gonna end off this video by saying until you actually see ddr5 8000 sticks readily available i would hold off on ddr5 still to this day it's completely pointless now i think we also need dual rank 8000 sticks that work see these sticks these ddr5 sticks that i'm using are single rank so they're still like a little bit left in the tank there right so you can get another kind of 10 percent by just going dual rank in terms of throughput right so what we really need is we need like a, a unify x or an apex type motherboard a two dim we need like maybe 16 or 32 gig sticks dual rank at 8000 and then maybe we'll revisit this whole topic again at that time i'm assuming we'll be deep into the 13th gen or the 14th or 15th gen by the time we actually get that kind of technology so right now ddr4 b die still the best and i hope that answers everybody's questions on why i keep recommending ddr4 because even if you know what you're doing ddr5 zero percent one percent baby one percent anyway guys if you like the content hit that subscribe button do all that youtube seo stuff like share subscribe comment down below what you think about ddr4 versus ddr5 and uh see you guys in the next one talk to you later